I think it's only, well, I don't think I know. When people are on a platform, they're on a platform for a specific reason. And mm -hmm. what, you, what YouTube is, why people want to follow is when you create a long form video and you show up in people's lives over and over and over again, people build a relationship with you. And then mm -hmm. when you're making longer videos, they're spending a lot more time with you as opposed to Instagram and TikTok, where it can be 30 to 45 seconds once in a while where you're at mercy of the algorithm. However, if you really like somebody on YouTube, you want to see almost all of their videos and you build a yeah. real relationship. You depend, it's almost like your friend. You depend on them to show up at the same time every single week. And once they see that, they want to say, oh, what else is going on in this person's life? And then they follow up the other way. But uh, you don't, I think I had a friend once, I had a couple of friends and he was an Instagrammer that wanted to start YouTube. And this is why he said he went to a meetup where there was a YouTuber there and he was the Instagrammer. He had a pretty big account and his meetup line was done in like 20 minutes. But the YouTuber who had a smaller following, the line was just endless and people were there and wanting to meet this person. And he decided, Hey, uh, I'm on the wrong platform. I'm focusing on the wrong platform. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's very interesting. Uh, the the psychology of this uh, parasocial relationship and as just as you explained I just realized that I have the same situation even with you I talked to lots of other friends that I've met on Instagram and when we had discussions I didn't feel this like how should I say this I'm not trying to I'm not saying that that it wasn't a, an enjoyable experience or something but with with you I feel like this relationship even though you don't know me but I watch so many of your videos I feel like I know you and it's a very interesting and uh, like it's, a it's, magical it's, situation it's, this parasocial relationship well it's interesting when, when you create YouTube you have to it, what people get in people get and I see this in Instagrammers too I have a lot of Instagram friends and I'm not Bashing them is a different mindset. They're always talking about, oh, the algorithm's not pushing my content or my content's not being pushed. They're so frustrated. On YouTube, when it comes to long videos, YouTube doesn't push a creator's content. It pulls content to the viewer. Whatever mm. you want to watch, YouTube is going to show you videos in your feed that you want to watch. You're not just forced and push stuff. Also like TikTok where they just throw stuff in front of you and then you have to go ahead and choose so you have to do an additional okay. work. You have to click. You have to watch the initial ad to get through it to get to the content. So you have to do a little bit more work. You're a little bit more invested uh, in the content. Yeah. Instagram with static photos, just like YouTube, it's, it is it is edited. But with long-form videos, you can feel if somebody's authentic or not. And you can see mistakes once in a while. Instagram, a lot of times, Instagram or, or any platform for that regard are edited specifically to look as good as possible and that's not real life exactly and i think uh the search engine also plays a role because on instagram no one really searches for anything just what the algorithm serves you but on youtube when you can search and people find you for example they are looking for a specific uh wine they are reviewing the the v-line wine region and they find your video those are the people that are that can become real fans because they are already interested in the exact thing that you are talking about and when they watch your video and if they like it that is very valuable and no other platform does that because not a platform but no people are searching really seriously on other platforms well youtube is the second largest search engine in the world owned by google which is the first largest the search first engine. One, yeah. but uh, a lot of people don't understand is Actually, searchable content is quite valuable, like you say, but 70% of the views on YouTube come from suggested or recommended. That's where you get explosive growth. If you create a video that a lot of people want to watch for a long time, that video is going to get pushed to more and more people, and there you can have explosive growth. Exactly. I, I'm curious about your uh, statistics on YouTube, uh, because with these specific contents, the wine industry, talking about these different topics, I'm sure that all, a lot of your old videos are still getting views from a search engine. Are your uh, statistics different than you just mentioned that on average on YouTube, 70% is suggested? Are your statistics different than that? Because I would I would guess that you have a lot, quite a lot of uh, search views. I, no, it's the same. Most uh, most the same? most most views are are from brow what YouTube calls browse or suggested, where YouTube shows uh, when you open your homepage, you have a bunch of yeah. videos that are shown. That's where actually most of the views come from. Or the up next, what YouTube suggests when you get to the end of the video, it produces. 
this is the easiest way of think about it. If I sent you a video and I said, Arpod, you should watch this. You know, part of you, maybe you'll watch it, maybe you won't. Sometimes a lot of people get defensive. Ah, somebody's throwing something at me. You know, maybe I don't really want to watch it. If you're in the YouTube rabbit hole and you're watching a video from somebody you like and another video pops up by either that same creator or something that's a similar topic, you're going to watch that one too because you're already in that headspace. And that's yeah. where explosive growth happens. And that's why it's so di it's a di it's a completely different mindset. What's also hard is YouTube is a completely open and free market. People pay by clicking and viewing. So you have to create the best possible content that you can make uh, for the audience. I, I like when I, I always listen to a lot of interviews with Mr. Beast and he always gives suggestions or answers when people say, well, my content's being pushed. And he always is quite blunt. He's like, well, because your videos suck. Make better videos. Doesn't mean you have to yeah. spend the ridiculous amounts of money, but you just have to learn how to make better and better and more engaging videos. Exactly. Wow, that's very interesting. I watched all of those videos as, as well. So we have similar interests here. How do you see the uh, YouTube changes uh, with the YouTube shorts? As you mentioned, and I totally agree that YouTube is, is uh, mainly about long form content and it is not going to change. But uh, on the side of uh, subscriber growth, shorts can have uh, can be uh, quite powerful. How do you shorts, see this? Oh, shorts are very powerful. I, I you see different statistics. I don't know what's true or not because I'm I'm all over the place. But you do see that it, some statistics show that there's actually more views on YouTube Shorts than TikTok right now. I know personally, yeah. I had a I had a YouTube Short breakout and go for 16 million views. And that will push subscribers, but a lot of th that can be skewed because those same subscribers that watch your YouTube short, that watch shorts, don't necessarily always want to watch the long form content. You see, I have some friends, I have some very uh, big, big creator friends, millions and millions of subs. Uh, I've got one that he's getting a lot of views on his shorts channel, but on his long views, even though he's got a lot of subscribers, gets his long form videos get maybe seven, eight, 10,000 views, which is a lot, seems like a lot to a lot of people, but when you have millions of subscribers, it's not that much. So people also gotta be careful with that because shorts, sh short form con, just like anything in life, anything that comes quick and easy isn't as valuable. Not saying it doesn't carry inherent value for you or me, because I could get valuable information out of it, but uh, to the creator, it doesn't give the same value as a well-crafted long form video that's the most difficult thing to do and that's the most rewarding thing of course and also uh not just the viewers the shorts viewers are not really uh not necessarily the same uh people don't have the same interest who are watching the long form videos but actually i saw a video uh colin and samir uh video they talked to the ceo the new ceo of yeah. uh, youtube and he said that actually technically they are the algorithm is not uh, necessarily recommending uh, your long form videos to your subscribers that subscribed from a short youtube short which, which is they, quite right. they yeah I, that was initially they said that they've started to change that one thing that i've been finding powerful for me personally is now youtube has a feature where you it was shorts you can actually link a video mm -hmm. in the shorts title i've stopped creating i've stopped for the most part creating original shorts content or short form content because it takes way too long time way too too long of a time for minimum gain i've just started chopping up long form videos into short videos and i find people like that because you I usually find an interesting 30 to 60 second snippet that's meaningful, that's useful, people like it. And then peop and then I put the title in, and if people want more, then they click it and get, get more. It's just like going to a buffet. You sample a few things. If you like it, you go back and you take the big plate. Exactly, it's a great uh, feature. Uh, so you started using it. I'm interested uh, in your experience. How do you oh, yeah. it? does it convert? Oh yeah, I'm, it's, but it does, but you just, you gotta get, it's a numbers game. It's almost like a big funnel, you gotta get, a ton of views on shorts to convert into that video and to get into a long form video and then just not be attached to the process. I've enjoyed doing shorts because it's fun. I consume shorts. I like it. I consume a lot of content based on photography, cinematography, mindset, personal development, business. And I like shorts because it's usually a 30 to 45 second poignant 
powerful statement thought i'm it and i move on so i do i do find that quite powerful and even me i i notice too that's very rare that a short will be so intriguing that i want to go and watch that long form video it happens but it doesn't happen often because if i'm in shorts consumption mode i'm in shorts consumption mode and i don't want to move over Exactly, and I think the the this short form content market is more diluted, not just on shorts, but all the other platforms. In long form, usually ninety nine percent of the time, I mean not ninety nine, but a large percentage of the time, all the content is connected to the real uh, creator. But in yeah. short form, there is a lot of curation pages and oh, correlations and uh, or people and, stealing uh, curators. That people people stealing yep. content and so i had somebody come i consult a few people i had somebody come to me and ask what they should do because their content was stolen i was like look short you're not going to lose that much money and if you're if your contents get if yourself your personality is getting pushed out through other channels then whatever maybe that will eventually lead to people actually being connected with you and it's, it's, it's thinking small because nobody not even not even uh not even Constantine Palm, not even Wine King, the two biggest channels, not even though Jay of Wine King is not completely in English anymore. They're big for for wine, but they're not big channels by far. Yeah. You got to start thinking really, really, really big. Um, and if you think small, that stuff matters. But if you're thinking the bigger picture, all that little stuff, it doesn't matter if people curate or use some of your content. Thanks for watching this video. You can watch the full podcast episode by clicking here or watch another interesting video by clicking here. Let's continue the discussion in the comment section and see you in the next one.